Hey guys, Vernon Mason here, your leadership and team development coach right here through Flipping Teams. Thank you very much for joining me again. I want to go ahead and apologize ahead of time. Right now, I'm not too far from here. We do have an air base. And we're going to be doing a couple of landings uh, here coming up. Shouldn't be too loud to where you can't hear me, but I do like to keep these videos very raw, very real, um, so that way you can just know it's a lot, it's very relatable to you, obviously unedited, so you're getting the real deal anytime that you come through. Uh, but thanks again for joining me. Go ahead and subscribe below if you haven't already. Make sure to give us a thumbs up as well. We greatly appreciate your support. If you're viewing this video through another outlet besides YouTube, make sure to follow the link so that we can take you to subscribe. Give the thumbs up so you can get all the important updates and the updated uh, leadership and team development uh, tips, tricks, skill sets, those kind of things that we can bring to you. And of course, the release date for my upcoming guide straight to you called Flipping Teams, a leader's guide to building top performing teams. I definitely want to come to you because what brought me here was actually a little bit of a procrastinated task of my own, which was cleaning out my truck. Um, and while I was doing that, I was reminded about a cultural denial that we kind of have out there right now in regards to procrastination. So what do I mean by that? Procrastination, you know, how many times have you been told that procrastination leads to disaster? You shouldn't procrastinate or whatever you do, by all means, avoid procrastination. Okay. I'm sure you've been told a thousand times just like I have, and I've definitely tried to do that throughout my career, but you know, something very, very odd has kept happening. At some point, some time, I ended up procrastinating. Didn't know why, couldn't figure out why, and some of those things it was completely obvious you shouldn't be procrastinating on, but I ended up doing it. Have you done something like that before? Have you done something unexplainable to where you, you shouldn't have procrastinated, but for some reason you did? Well, I did discover a little something special or unique about procrastination. Procrastination, turns out, is a byproduct of an emotional response when something else is more important or found to be more important than the task at hand. Again, it is an emotional response, a byproduct of that. So if it's a byproduct of an emotional response, that means that is a part of an emotion right? Or it's at least triggered by an emotion. An emotion is a natural thing, a natural thing. And I think we all know that anytime that you try to avoid using an emotion or expressing an emotion, when it gets bottled up, something eventually is going to happen that makes us regret it. That's like saying you need to avoid being angry. But I think we all know if we avoid being angry, if we avoid anger altogether, something bad's going to happen that we're certainly going to regret. And that's exactly how procrastination is. Since it is a byproduct of an emotional response, and that means procrastination happens pretty naturally. So how on earth do you avoid using, or I'm sorry, avoid a natural response? And the trick is that you don't. You don't avoid it. What actually should be said is instead of avoiding procrastination, you actually shouldn't overestimate procrastination. Okay, now what do I mean by that, overestimating procrastination? Well, procrastination, of course, again, it's delaying that inevitable to the last minute, to the last second, right? Delaying that task to the last second. Now, if you avoid it long enough or you use it too much, right, it can lead to some disadvantages like you being overconfident in regards to getting a task done. That's something real small, no problem. To kick back, relax, grab a couple of beers, watch the show, go out with some friends, because I know that something's gonna be absolutely easy. And then what happens whenever you face that task, you end up running into something that wasn't as easy as you thought, or you completely underestimated the task at hand, right? So you don't have the preparation for it. Now, of course, in those instances, procrastination is an absolute bad thing. But again, going back to what I was talking about before, if it's an emotional response that you can't avoid, how could we control it? Or at least manage it. Just like we manage anger, we can certainly manage how, when, and where we decide to procrastinate. Okay, and I talk about that right here in my guide, Flipping Teams. This particular one is with Pillar 2 when it goes into productive time management. It's my particular unique system on how you can manage your time, not just effectively, as everyone says, but really more so productively. So you can spend that time either reaching your goals or spend that time effectively developing your team to reach their goals or the team goals collectively. Okay, but we're going to talk specifically around strategic procrastination. Now you might be asking yourself, self, what in the heck is strategic procrastination? 
and how can you be strategic about procrastination? Now, just like we talked about procrastination, is simply just that byproduct of an emotional response, right? Of course, whenever we find something else to be more important than the task at hand. Now, think of that exact definition, but add strategic to it. So, strategically seeing when something else is more important than the task at hand. Strategically, okay? Now, I know that sounds absolutely crazy, but there are advantages to being procrastinating. There are advantages to procrastination. However, you have to be strategic about it. You have to know when to procrastinate and when not to procrastinate. What are the best times to do so? Because there are several advantages. One of them, I know one particular advantage everybody knows about. That's exactly why we get triggered to procrastinate, right? So I know that you know precisely what the biggest advantage to procrastinating is. I won't spoil it just yet because there's also a second one that I want to see if you can possibly identify. So I'll give you a couple examples of what I mean by strategic procrastination, right? So um, way back way back in high school, I had a professor, great guy, Mr. Gordon, who was my chemistry and physics teacher. And Mr. Gordon, if you're out there right now watching this, thank you a thousand times for everything that you've done to, to help uh, generate creativity in our minds and spontaneity in a lot of cases, uh, but also your continued support in the education field when it comes to chemistry and physics. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, but I do remember more than anything else, and I know a bunch of my uh, high school buddies who might be watching this would definitely probably remember this time, but there was a particular project that we had in which we had to build a rocket. Okay, um, And I knew we had to build a rocket, right? It was coming, it was no trade secret, but we all had to build a particular rocket and we only had two weeks to build that rocket. Okay, And that rocket was measured in two particular ways. It was measured in the vertical takeoff, so basically how high it went, and you were kind of measured, you were kind of measured for a, a percentile. So those who were at the top uh, that at most had to reach a particular height and then of course you had a nice uh, second weight or second tier height that you had to reach. And then of course you had the bottom tier, which if you didn't reach either of those heights, you didn't get a passing grade for that particular metric. Uh, and then of course, the inside of that rocket, there had to be an egg placed within that rocket. Now I know a lot of you may have had a project very similar to this through college, through high school, throughout the country. So if you did, great, you can relate. If not, this was pretty crazy. It was pretty wild and pretty fun. But we had an egg that had to be inserted inside of there, which helped measure how well your rocket has landed, or at least secured the egg. Okay? So those are two metrics that we were measured on. Now, whenever I was sitting back at this moment, when I was looking at developing and thinking about this rocket, I don't want to be the stress freak like a bunch of my other friends who had to stress this thing out and plot this course out in order to get this rocket put together. Because at that time, getting the rocket, passing the class, passing the grade, it wasn't the top, top priority as maybe it should have been as my focuses were in other areas, sports, you know, as far as for uh, JROCT, uh, a couple other drill events, things like that, football games coming up, those kind of things that I was really more focused on. So I had to find a way to procrastinate, but I also knew that procrastinating would ultimately lead me to an F right? So I had to make sure I procrastinated properly. I strategically procrastinated. So if I said, hey, okay. So he says that, of course, the egg had to make sure that it wasn't cracked, that it remained intact. And you were graded on, obviously, um, the how whole that egg was at, at the end of the at the end of the event. So if you were graded on that, then that told me, okay, I could stay here and constantly test out different size rockets, different weighted rockets, all these different ways to construct the interior as well with parachute mechanisms, all of this to make sure that egg survives somehow. Or I could sit back and say, hey, there might be a way I can pretty much just protect the egg itself and not worry about really protecting the rocket. So I know if that was a particular way, I, I trust myself to be able to come up with a creative idea by that point. Um, and then of course a rocket, constructing a rocket. I've seen many rockets before, I've heard of different types of rockets being built. So I was pretty sure and pretty confident that I could definitely build that up. So of course the next following two weeks, I've enjoyed my time doing whatever it is that I felt like doing that I thought was the most important thing at that time until the night before came. 
it's come six o'clock at night, don't have a rocket built, just gathered all the products that I needed, all the, all the things I needed for the actual production of the rocket. And I stay up until three in the morning putting this together. Now that is absolutely miserable. Yes, now at that time, I could give up a little bit of sleep, right? It was a little bit different than how it is or it might be for us adults today. But nonetheless, I spent that time between 6 p.m. and 3 a.m constructing, designing and constructing. And you know what I found out? Well, I found out that if by chance I built a rocket six feet tall, mainly hollow, that once I put an egg in it, uh, and no matter where I set it against the wall, it adjusted the rate weight accordingly to that side of the rocket. So guess what happened to the rocket? Fell over, right? So I thought of another great idea. Let me go ahead and fill the rocket. What if I took some sort of uh, foam, some sort of uh, foam chemical that when hardens, it creates a nice solid structure around it, still lightweight, still able to produce the, uh, the vertical lift off that I needed to produce. And that might be able to work brilliantly. So I took one particular section of the rocket, filled it up as such with the egg inside, put it all together, sat it up, fantastic. Guess what happened? The weight was too top heavy Therefore, the rocket tipped over. But then I put the weight towards the bottom, and I put the weight towards the bottom, that means I did not have enough power in the engines to actually launch it successfully as high as I need to go. So now it impacted with the height in which I can reach, the vertical height. So coming down to the wee hours of the morning, um, now I had to try and figure out a different solution. And so having to come away with all these different types of ideas, I'm blasting through and giving a shot. I came down to something so simple that needed just rubber bands, paper clips, and a stapler. I was able to create a particular suspension system that suspended my egg within the rocket, knowing that I can't successfully produce a parachute. I can't successfully create some sort of ejection seat to save my egg and like it, let it look amazing. So I had to count on my rocket crashing, but the egg still surviving. So suspension turned out to be the idea I put together. I was able to wrap that egg up. I was able to suspend it properly, equally balanced in the second tier of that rocket. And guess what happened that next day when that rocket took off? Not only did I meet the vertical height because I didn't have any added weight outside of the egg that was in there, but because of the suspension, that rocket crashed and it crashed hard. But inside that hollow shell, that egg still remained completely intact. We've had people who spent weeks putting together parachute contraptions, ejection contraptions, or even filling the interior, kind of like how I felt to try and protect the egg should the crash be imminent and they still had cracked eggs. So that was a real life example of a moment I took a more strategic approach to procrastinating. I knew a particular project was gonna to take too much of my time and at that time that wasn't my main focus. So I had to find another way to successfully procrastinate to make sure I still got the A on the exam. And that procrastination did two things. That strategy did two things for me. Not only did it free up all the time in the world that I needed to do other, what I felt were more priority tasks, but it also brought on, which again, that's that number one thing we talked about. Everyone knows procrastination does of course free up a lot more time that you can spend it doing other priorities. Of course, that's a huge benefit, right? But that other benefit, if you haven't figured it out, was creativity. Met with that deadline, met with that deadline, I knew I was challenged and prepared to get creative. Again, that's because I knew myself. So the strategy behind it is I knew that I would be able to creatively, creatively be encouraged to find a creative solution into my problem, knowing I can't do other certain routes because I didn't allow enough time. That's being strategic. I didn't sit back and not plan to have anything prepared for me in those final hours of that evening before rocket launch, right? Nope, I knew two weeks in advance of how exactly, how exactly I was gonna start construction and what I was going to do. How I was gonna implement that strategy was completely different and procrastination has allowed me to drive out that creative aspect, that creative part of me to go ahead and find that solution. 
Now that sounds absolutely nuts because again, procrastination could have eminently led me to not get anything done, which some did do just that. They created a failed rocket, a rocket ship that had many complications to it. But there were also several students who did all the planning in the world for the perfect, most amazing looking rocket. And I know if some of you are watching, you know who I'm talking about. But you've made that perfect rocket and it still never took off. It still never launched. And since it never left the ground, you never got the grade that you were really seeking for or hoping for. Okay? But that's because I was strategic about it. I knew that if I procrastinated, I wasn't going to just procrastinate, meaning do nothing to prepare for it. No, I was prepared for the task at hand, had the materials in hand, had everything ready to go for that idea. The only thing I didn't do was spend the time necessarily necessary in order for me to build it a certain way. Again, it's because I had other priority tasks. Now, does that mean that you have a different task or something that's important that requires testing to avoid testing because you're gonna nail it the first time? Absolutely not. That's not what that example is from. What that example is for is just how I basically took one situation that should have been, could have been planned out throughout that entire two week process and I was able to make it happen within 12 hours, okay? Or within 24 hours for that matter to make sure that I still had a successful launch and I still had a passing grade, okay? I also had many other examples back in college because I learned to be able to procrastinate studying. I learned to be able to procrastinate based on the type of exams, the type of tests they were going to be. I knew exactly how to study them properly. So by me being strategic and me learning how to procrastinate in that particular way, both the rocket for those exams, it has helped prepare me for if in the event I ever decide to build another rocket in the future where it involves a suspended egg, guess what I will do to that egg? I will find out that suspension was a great route to go and therefore I've learned something. I've gotten a creative, creative point of view I wouldn't have gotten before had I not strategically procrastinated. Okay, so when we talk about procrastination, procrastination again is a byproduct of an emotional response. Therefore, you can't avoid it. But if you push it back long enough, it is going to make you procrastinate on the things or the tasks that you shouldn't procrastinate on. Okay, so again, it's about being strategic, pushing back those tasks. All right, not necessarily the graded task is what you feel individually is the lowest priority task. It's about procrastinating on those tasks strategically. So that way you still get them done, but you fill up your time, most of your time, to be productive on the higher priority tasks. So for today, for instance, today I hit my stock goal. There is one priority. Next thing I hit is I made sure that I hit my income for the day with some of my businesses. So I hit my daily goal there. I also hit my daily goal on appointments set by setting two appointments for future, uh, future business that I have set up. And then here I am right here, setting a marketing goal, getting this video done before I finally get to the procrastinated task right behind me, strategically procrastinating to complete this truck just before a date. So I'm gonna get this thing detailed. All right, but again, that's what I bring back to you. Procrastination, don't avoid it. Don't be afraid of it. Use it strategically. So you take those lower end priority items and you procrastinate on those. If you do that, you will help your mindset learn how to prioritize the bigger, the bigger tasks, the bigger goals that you're trying to reach, the bigger behaviors. You really work hard to stress yourself over trying to memorize, trying to try to perfect. Okay, it's because you are evading or avoiding procrastination, we should be using it, but strategically. So again, procrastinating on those lower tiered items, those lower priority tasks, will allow you to accomplish those higher priority tasks, okay? And then by the time you get to that lower priority task, that time frame in which you have is gonna allow you to be creative and how to knock it out quickly. Or maybe it's something you already had a plan for because you knew it was coming, you've been waiting for so long, so it made the task easier. Do not use procrastination as a means to ignore or forget a task. Know that it's there, know that it's coming, and you will be prepared for it. Why? Because you didn't just procrastinate, you were strategic about procrastinating. 
So again, guys, thank you so much for your time and support. Don't forget to click the subscription below. Definitely give us our thumbs up or follow the link if you're looking at this somewhere outside of YouTube. We greatly appreciate it. But now I got to knock this priority right out the way so I can get ready for the rest of my evening. Thank you so much, guys. Keep in tune for the next. And remember, always lead from the front.